Hello and welcome to episode 40, where we're going to try and record a cello detuned so it plays in fourths. It became obvious that I was going to have to explain this one, so we're going to start with a section that explains the difference between cellos that play in fourths and cellos that play in fifths. And then we introduce some microphones and we try and record it. Uh, the reason being, I just wanted about 20 or 30 seconds of a real cello in a project that I'm doing for something else. And my cello is a bit grim, so it didn't sound as good as I expected. And I decided to start fiddling about. So that's what this video is all about. Fiddling with a cello till it sounds nice and then hopefully recording it. So on with the video. Before we can start recording, we need to talk a little bit about the actual cello itself. And there's a bit of history here. Um, cellos are, along with violas and violins, tuned in fifths, perfect fifths. Um, so if the C is the bottom string, the next one will be tuned as a G, then a D, then an A. Now, if you tune a bass guitar, uh, a fretless bass guitar, or even a double bass, they're tuned in fourths. The, the difference seems small, but it's pretty important. The thing that is critical is the tone of the cello. Now, if you've learned to play an electric bass guitar, you could buy a cello, if you try to play it, it goes wrong because your fingers are going to be playing the wrong notes. I'll, I'll, I'll explain. If we play a scale on a cello, we've got essentially an extra note that our fingers have to cover. And if you hit the two notes together, so you actually get the perfect fifth. Um, So that's tuned in fifths. Um, it means that the top note is a reasonably high A. So that's your open A at the top. Now, the snag for me is that I learned on a cello when I was a kid. Uh, and then I moved to electric basses, uh, all sorts of variations, and then eventually a double bass. Um, so I sort of got quite comfy playing in fourths. Now the snag with cellos is they've got quite a decent range from bottom to top and they start on the C. So that's quite a handy note for most modern music, which tends to be in sort of one or two sharps, one or two flats. So it's a sort of handy starting point. And there is a sort of richness to that bottom C. It's, yeah, it's nice. Um, and when I play electric bass, I tend to not play that many open strings because there is a tone difference, isn't it? If you play electric bass, I'm sure you'll know exactly what I mean. If you actually put your fingers on a note in between the frets, it's a different tone to if it's an open string. Same thing applies on a cello, but not quite so much. Uh, and open strings do feature. Now, in violins, violas, cellos, well, I suppose double basses, but uh, on the higher instruments, then most times you're going to be wobbling fingers about. So there's going to be vibrato and stuff like that. Um, so if you play a note that's an open string, it doesn't have that. And that sort of also gives you a weird richness in, in the way that the instruments are played. So open strings are actually singing out and some of the keys that the music is played in are done deliberately so that you can use open strings and have that sort of very pure sound. Now, this particular cello is a pile of poo. Um, I bought it dirt cheap because I knew I was going to start to fiddle with it. When I got it, frankly, it was pretty unplayable. Um, so I wouldn't pretend to be an expert at fixing instruments like this. I'm certainly not an expert at it. Um, I don't even have the right tools in my toolbox. But with a hacksaw, I lowered 
the notches here. So the, the actual first note, like you would on a, an electric guitar or a bass, uh, was actually sort of in the right place, played in tune, and also didn't take sort of like a, a grip, like a mole grip to, to push it down. So that's what I did. So I hacked that about. And my favourite microphone for recording um, string instruments is an AKG C414. I've had them for a long time, and I rather like the sound of a 414. And a 414 on this cello is not exactly a good choice. Um, if we go up high... It sounds pretty shrill and shrieky. I, I really don't like it. So it doesn't record very well. Now, <clears throat> being honest, if I'm doing some music that requires a cello, I tend to use samples. I've got a decent sample package which I run on Cubase here and I tend to use samples uh, of really nice cellos and I get away with it mostly. Um, the one I'm doing at the moment um, really needs a real cello and I just don't think this records very well and I've tried a few alternative microphones and different positions and it's just this particular cello. It's a bit rotten and um, it's uh, just not a particularly nice sounding instrument. Um, so I decided what I'm going to do is tune it in fourths. Now, that doesn't sound like a sort of, you know, too exciting thing to do, does it? But if you tune it in fourths, the one thing that happens is your top note will come down. Um, that A will actually come right down to an E flat. So that's quite a way away. Now, what will happen is the pitch lowers, obviously, because we're not going anymore. We're going to compress that range down. And so it'll start on a C, then it'll be an F, then it'll be a B flat, and then it'll be an E flat. Uh, so that's the difference between playing in fifths and playing in fourths. It also means that there's a note missing if you play that scale again. Um, on here, Um, we've got one less note in that particular part of the scale because we, the next note won't be a G, it'll be down to an F. So I'm going to quickly retune this into fourths. Um, it does mean you can't do this sort of stuff anymore. You can't get that particular, you know, it's a perfect fifth. You can't sort of do that anymore. Um, that's gone. Um, but I hope the advantages will make up for it. Professional cellists can even buy special strings that are designed to be tuned wrongly. So if you would decide you want to tune a cello in fourths, you can actually go out and you can spend over a hundred pounds on a set of strings designed to sound the best with that different tuning. Because although the pitch has changed, the tension has changed as well. I mean, when I push um, notes down, it's the tension is pretty high. Um, even the C is is quite a, a, a tightly strung C. It's more than on a bass guitar. Um, but if I drop the tuning on the other notes, it's going to make the strings slacker. Now. I'm hoping that the benefit will be, it will be more mellow. Um, I don't really know. Um, that's my thought. Without any vibrato. You can hear like there's a bit of a resonance there, but. But it's it's a bit, mm. and I'm hoping that sort of thing will will disappear when I've tuned it down. Here comes the tuning down. Give me a minute, and I'll just get it back into tune again.
So now, now with our fourth tuning, we've actually got. String tension is down considerably on the higher three strings. sounds more mellow. I think I might have got it. scale played from that C going up is and then the next on there so that's the F so it sort of it's a bit weird because it, it, it does feel very different um, there's a change in tone that I can detect um, and it's going to be a bit of a weird thing to sort of have to relearn because it doesn't play exactly like a bass guitar. It doesn't feel the same. Um, get the idea? Anyway, so that's what happens when you take the cello and you tune the cello to fourth instead of fifth. I'm hoping it's going to record okay. So my next job is going to be putting a few microphones out and having a record and seeing if it sounds okay. What I've decided to do is I'm going to record the bit I need for this little project I'm working on. Um, and I'll give you some clips of the raw cello. And then I'll also give you that little clip with the thing that I'm playing to as well. So you should be able to hear whether the actual change we've made to playing in fourths makes it fit in the mix a bit better. I hope it does. Um, I will use uh, a range of different price microphones. I think that's probably a good thing to do. Um, so I'm going to use uh, SM57 because we talked about that in one of the other videos. Um, I've also got um, a mic that I've never used in a cello before. Another dynamic. So um, I'm going to fish this out. Um, it's a, a Sennheiser 609. Um, I use them on guitar cabs, really. Uh, I know most people use 57s. But uh, this summer I've been doing some Queen tribute shows. And um, they've got quite a few AC30s, uh, sort of as Brian May did. Um, and those mics were specified for miking the cabs up. So I thought it'd be interesting to see if one of those sounds any good in a cello. It's slightly narrower than a normal cardioid, so that might be good, it might be bad. Um, don't know. It's going to be one of these suck it and see videos again, I think. So, But we'll start with the 57. We'll use that Sennheiser as a dynamic, and then I'll maybe use this 414 if it sounds okay uh, maybe if I need something a bit mellower maybe maybe an 87 I don't know we'll have a go but um, we'll certainly put quite a few mics out and have a listen and see what they do on this rather cheap and cheerful cello that I um, that I don't mind hacking about a bit uh, I've done quite a few little mods on it to see what's going on including um sculpting Brits of the bridge off and all sorts of weird and wonderful things like that. Um, I sort of treated it as if it was a guitar, action-wise, and that meant lowering the action a fair bit. I mean, I lobbed nearly uh, six mil off the top of the bridge, so I've brought the action down to something that's more akin to what I'm used to playing a bass guitar. 
uh, I found that sort of having a slightly higher action as it originally did uh, might be great for a proper cellist, but it's no good for me. So that's what I've been doing, hacking this thing about a bit. So if we can get it to record nicely, uh, that's a useful thing, isn't it? Cheap cello, perhaps slightly different mic technique and see what happens. Anyway, on with the video. there we go at the end of all that I think my conclusions are that the SM57 and the Sennheiser didn't quite cut it so that was out for the dynamic microphones a bit of a shame uh, it left me with the 414 and the U87 and I, although I like the 414 I think for this particular recording on this modified cello the U87 won uh, it doesn't always uh, it's not my favorite microphone by a long way but in this particular recording, I think the 87 just managed to get a bit more smoothness to that rather messed around with cello. Anyway, I hope you like it. See you on the next one. Take care.